today for uh, I was going to talk a little bit about the fiber separation app. If you're not familiar with it, this is an app that we have available on the App Center. So what I was going to do uh, today was talk a little bit about the fiber separation app, walk through it, do a live demo, then uh, get into a discussion about some more difficult to analyze fiber images. Um, not everything, as we all know, is not nice, clean and pristine and easy just to run in sometimes the default settings. We'll talk a little bit about some updates uh, that have a material effect on the fiber separation app. And then uh, a little bit more about curve fibers. And by curve fibers, I mean hairpins. Um, and it's a little bit about how the fiber app, fiber separation app was developed, was capable of doing, and then um, a certain condition that uh, we can address within the app. So let's start off talking about the fiber separation app, as I mentioned. This is available through the app's ribbon in Image Pro. And through the App Center, you can download it directly into Image Pro, and that will install if you've never tried that before. It's very simple and very straightforward. Um, PDF documentation. In apps, um, if you hover over it, and I'll show this in a second, is there's a PDF explaining what the features are and then doing a walkthrough of the fiber separation app. And this is true for any app that we have posted. The app was originally developed for straighter fibers, um, more like asbestos, but it can measure fibers that are curving, and that's where some of these parameters start coming into, into play. And I'll explain that as we do the live walkthrough. Then finally, if there's really some hairpin or fibers looping back on itself, um, sort of like a hairpin, you know, where it's switching back, there's actually a modification that can be done to the app. It's not exposed, but this can be done. And as we go forward with some other improvements we'd like to make down the road, this will uh, certainly be exposed in an easier to use fashion. So let me go live for a second and call up Image Pro. This is an asbestos fiber. As you can see right off the bat, a lot of texture, a lot of background. Sometimes a little hard to distinguish the fibers and, you know, fairly typical example. So the app is located in the Apps tab. As I mentioned, you can download it through the App Center. And let me just call this up. And also the PDF, just by hovering over the app, you can easily call it Fiber Separation App. And I'll drag this over. And so this goes through a walkthrough if you've never seen one of the apps before, going through the settings and what they all mean. And this is for fibers. This is sort of an important section about what these parameters mean. And then going through a little tutorial about how to use it. And then also this one, you can actually download the, uh, the demo fibers from, uh, from our website. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some of the parameters and setting this up. Right now, I'm using the default settings. As with, with many other things, I can always save the settings and recall them later if I want to use this app over and over again for a specific fiber type. It's pretty straightforward walking through fiber thickness in pixels. And what's nice is you have a little tool here to actually draw on the fibers. I'm not going to do this. I'm just going to use the default settings first so you can kind of see what it is and see some of the changes that you can make. And I think I hit a reset. Yep. Minimum fiber length. So as you can see, there's some long fibers, short fibers. And what you can do is simply click on the button and then draw along that fiber, and that will give you a minimum fiber length. So that there's some constraints in here about determining what is a fiber and what is not. Angle of deviation. As I mentioned, we can measure fibers that are curving. And let me just pull up the graph because this will explain it. In the fiber separation app, again, if you're looking at, for example, something that's really a straight fiber, asbestos, for example, typically they're straight, not a lot of coverage or two, you can set this angle of deviation. If it deviates more than that many degrees, it will break that fiber into two. And so that's one of those key adjustments, that if you have something that actually does curve around a bit, 
you can actually set it to a larger angle and then I'll measure it as a single fiber. If everything measuring is pretty much straight, matchstick like, you know, your angle is your angle of deviation is going to be small. And so this gives a nice little graphic explaining that. Search area, this is our next one. So where you have crossing fibers, and Image Pro needs to determine what belongs as they're crossing and you're getting these connections, how far to search out to find one end of the fiber and connect it to the next end versus, you know, trailing off or curving around or anything. So this is defining that search area. Again, this can be manually drawn on the image. And the final ones overlap. If you have crossing fibers, how much can they overlap? In this case, you know, again, setting in pixels, but you can define this off the image by simply clicking on the eyedropper, drawing along, and it will set that, that parameter. What type of fibers are you measuring compared to the background? Are they dark fibers on a bright background or are they bright fibers on a dark background? Input, and this is the one that becomes a little bit important when you have difficult to analyze fibers. What is our starting point? And we have a choice. Here I'm just going to start with the native image. It is, we'll go through a process and I'll explain the process in a second. Are we working with a binary image? And I'll show the example. For some reason, for, in some cases, you have fibers that are really buried into the background, hard to distinguish, maybe not a lot of contrast, um, depending upon the material, what the fiber is made out of, and sometimes may need to use a binary mask image. And this is where we get into some image processing. Sometimes we need to do a little image processing to bring those fibers out. And your input image can be a binary mask. And finally, a skeleton. Uh, if you're going through and make a binary mask, you can also skeletonize it and do it, but the app will do that itself. Typically, I'm using either the native image or those other instances where it's just a difficult image, a binary mask. Finally, a little bit about the data outputs. Auto-classify, they'll just do a length order sort. We can measure thickness. And we can also show the skeleton over the image if you'd like to see that. So let me explain kind of the key here and how fiber analysis is, or fiber separation is occurring underneath. You start off with your image and you define your parameters. What's occurring underneath is it's running an edge detection filter, specifically a SOBEL. And I'm going to show you the example where this is important to understand at little point. How the fibers are detected, Image Pro is running an image, image processing filter, edge detection, yeah, sorry edge detection specifically, and it's a SoBell filter. So let's just try the default setting. And here, again, I have bright fibers, so I'm going to press separate fibers. And we'll see how well it does. You're seeing it color-coded, because this is doing a classification. If I did not have auto-classify set, it would just have them all the same color. Now, let's talk a little bit about Actually, let me show the data. It's under the measure. So here are all the fibers, length of pixels. This is an uncalibrated image. If it's calibrated, it would be in calibrated units. You're giving the angle versus the uh, horizon. So let's talk a little bit about a specific, specific issue of settings. And here's a good example. This little fiber here looks pretty much like everything else but it didn't pick it up. The question is why? There's one of two reasons. Either A, it's hard to distinguish it from the background, and so the edge detection failed, or possibly one of the parameters is off. So in this case, I'm going to set my minimum length. To use any of these tools, you use the dropper here. You have a prompt. Please draw along a long and shortest, shortest fiber. And so now I'll define that. You can see the minimum length has changed. Let's rerun my analysis again. And now I'm starting to pick that up. Again, we can make some other adjustments. You can see what we're picking up here. These tables are dynamic. I can always select a fiber, if it's not a fiber, and delete it. And we're going to get more into editing in a second. 
one important thing is within this interface, the current interface, I can always draw by hand a polyline that if I miss the fiber, I can draw. A couple tips. Let me go back to our presentation here. A couple of important points. As I mentioned, Sobel filter, I'm talking about point number two. If you're really trying to understand what's going on, where it's really not picking up a fiber and everything seems to be right when you've adjusted your settings and drawn the image, chances are it's not picking it up. An easiest thing to do, and I'll show, I'll open up another image is, looks like it should work, it's not. If you run a Sobel filter, just doing a quick test on the image, you can see if it's picking up the fiber or not. And then you have a decision to make. The other one is, there's a fair amount of image processing going on here. We're running some bells, we're using account size, we're doing some other operations, especially if fitness is involved. If the image is large, the best thing to do is resize it. There's a resizing tool in Image Pro. You can rescale the image. Again, it'll keep the calibrated units so your values will be correct. But if you're starting to deal with images that are you know, 10,000 by 10,000 pixels, 5,000 by 5,000 pixels, you'll probably want to resize the image a little bit. All right, so let's talk about some challenges when you're, when again, there's a wide range of fibers, wide range of that materials. So what happens when you have a, a slightly challenging image? Here's an example. You can see the fibers. You can visually see the fibers. Fairly good, clean background. But what's occurring? Now I'm going to run this image. Now I'm going to walk through it, and then you can see a little bit more of what I'm describing. Actually, we look at this image live, and we'll, we'll do a version of that. You can see some of these fibers have very low contrast. They really, really blend into the background. There's not, oops, sorry, click too fast there, there we go. There's really not much of a gray level difference between these. Or if you have uneven illumination, again, running some bell filters or running image detection, if you have uneven illumination or hot spots, again, that can affect the results. So the thing is, if you get into a situation where you can clearly tell it's not picking up the fiber, then we can use a little bit of image processing, whether it's a flat and filter, count size, or some other filter to help bring up the image from the background, the fiber from the background, and use that as an input. So in this case, and I'll go through, through a live version of this, as you can see here, it's not doing too badly picking up a lot of these fibers. These are carbon. I'm running default settings. Actually, I've changed the settings a lot, a little bit because of the overlap and the crossing. You can see there's quite a bit of overlap here. Literally not picking up along here. Totally missed this. And if you take a look at the image a little bit closer, there's some uneven illumination. Fibers are blending in the background. Not much of a difference between the fiber and the background in some cases. And there's several other misses here. So what can you do? This gets back into using a different type of input into that. All these other parameters up top are still valid. The question is, what is going to be the input image? In this case, because we had uneven illumination, we could have done it traditional, could have run a flatten filter, maybe a little image enhancement, run a filter, and then use count size to create a binary mask. However, smart segmentation or machine learning segmentation tool allows me to go in fairly quickly and segment my fibers. What's also really nice about count size and smart segmentation is I can filter out anything that's a non-fiber. For example, if it doesn't meet those criteria, if you had some dirt or other debris, maybe a couple of little fragments that really aren't fibers, you could gate those out in a traditional manner using count size. Smart segmentation works really well for this. Again, separating objects from the background, I mean, the illumination hotspots, smart segmentation does a really good job of this. And the end point is, I want to create a binary mask. I can count my image, create the mask and count size, 
and then I can use that input as the image type. In this case, the image is really clean, very straightforward. In this case, all I did was use the parameters, create a binary mask, then the fiber separation on the binary mask. And here, after I count it, I use Features Manager to confirm my results and transfer the outlines of my counted fibers back over to the original image to see how well I was doing. It's that verification or checking step. And it did a good job finding everything. At that point, then it's easy to create a workflow to analyze your, your fibers. All right, so let's go a little bit through a, um, a little walk through there on this example. Let me just close this. I'm just going to reset that for grins. And I think this is the image. Yep. Perfect example. Let me just run the defaults and see how well we're doing. Here I have dark fibers, so there's one key difference. Run it. Not too bad. Two quick issues popped them on here. It totally fails here. And here there's a little bit of breakup. If you look at the gray levels over this image, not a heck of a lot of difference. So how can you verify that if you've gone through and set your settings and you're still not getting it, what's occurring? Easiest thing to do is do a little check. And this is where we use the process tab. First pass in the fiber app is, here let me just go set, is a Sobel filter. And you can quickly tell if I just create a new image so we can easily see side by side. What's occurred is, if I run that Sobel filter, it's totally missing it. There's just not enough contrast between the fiber and the background to pick it up. Another good example you're getting a little edge effects, a little shadowing, so it's breaking it up. And so this is why it's not finding the fiber separation app. And again, this is where the choice is, what corrective actions can you make? One suggestion that usually works pretty well is, I can use smart segmentation. Let me reset all this. Because these are really thin, again, I normally recognize, normally recommend using areas. Because these are so thin, there's in some cases just a single pixel here and there, if I would come in, create that background, and again, this is the normal machine learning image training, I can come in, clean this up pretty quickly, do a count size. Remember, count size, counting objects, filtering out things you don't want, count that image, and then finally make that binary mask and use that binary mask as the input. And then I can go through and count that. All right. A couple of other little little things here. So let me just close this off and then show, show uh, an example or two of, let me just run that to have that all set up. And let me open my other image. This gives a, a couple other points I wanted to make. All right, well, we made a couple of changes specifically to the manual measurements with an image program. That's part of what we use for the fiber editing, but to expand the capability of how we analyze fibers. And it really comes into the editing. I mentioned we can draw a fiber on the image. So if it misses a fiber, you can draw it on. However, because in terms of how we were working with lines um, as measurements, we, we did a couple of updates. One is, if you have a fiber that's short, we can actually now take the tail end of it and drag it out so you can extend fibers. So if there's a little fiber editing you can do with the patch, and now you can do that instead of having to delete and draw fibers. If there's a break, for some reason, again, low contrast, 
breaks it up, you can find bits and pieces of the fiber. We can now merge them together in lines. So in this case, I can select two fibers that are not connected, and if they should be connected, select one, select two, and then I can merge them together using the tool. If I have a fiber that is really two fibers, I can use the count size split tool. Again, I can also draw fibers. And what's also nice is for some reason, just because again, contrast issues and how it's fine, or maybe really thick fiber and it's sort of like a doublet line, I can use the poly nudge tool. Since this is a poly line, I can use that to manipulate or adjust the fiber edge to get it back in alignment with, you know, right selecting the fiber, right mouse clicking, and select the poly nudge tool. Again, this is all part of standard measurements, which has extended some of the capability here to how these lines are, um, can be adjusted. So let me just give a quick example here as we're wrapping this up. Coming back to Image Pro, perfect example. Here's one, here's two. Again, the contrast is almost impossible there. It just blends into the background. So in this case, in measure, at least for what we're doing now, is I can select two, and now in the relative group, I can link those together. Again, in the past, before the patch came out, I would literally have to delete all these and then redraw, but now I can link those together. Another option is if I have something that's a little bit short, uh, quickly look at, oh, here, let's take this one. If I highly load it at the end, I can actually drag that out. And that way well, you'll see it's selected, but it also extended the length. So I have a number of tools now available to me that if I need to make some adjustments, I can easily do that now besides just drawing it. Just as a reminder, if I'm hand drawing, it's just drawing the line, I'll get the, le I'll get the length, but it won't get a thickness. The only way to get a thickness is actually starting with the native image or a binary mask if it still maintains the uh, morphology of the fiber. So again, there's a couple of tools here. We've extended the capability of the fiber separation app with the um, patch coming out in July. And um, I guess I really just make sure I didn't miss anything. Again, splitting fibers, again, we can split fibers using count size. but um, that's it really for the fiber separation tool. Again, it's available for, from the website in the App Center. You can download it directly into ImagePro and have it installed.